Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at my UCAT revision tips and we're going to be looking at each section in relative detail and I'll be giving you my best tips for each section, telling you all the tricks that I've learnt from doing my UCAT a year ago. For those who have booked their UCAT tests in August and September, which are the later weeks of the UCAT testing dates, you still have a lot of time to revise and you still have so much time to improve and get better marks. I even know some people who did revision as late as a week before and still did very well in their UCAT. If you want to find out the scores I got, go check check out my last UCAT video which was the last minute tips for UCAT and you'll be able to see the breakdown of all my individual scores. The timestamps will be in this description as always so feel free to skip around the video and click on whatever section of the video suits you most. If you do have any questions please feel free to leave them down in the comments. I love answering and replying to you guys so please don't be afraid and feel free to ask anything you want. Links to all the resources I'll mention in this video will be down in the description as well so feel free to click on them and I'm not sponsored by any of them them, but I would like to be. But yeah, the resources included are things like Medify, which is an online UCAT testing platform, and the big UCAT book that you can buy. We'll start off with what is the UCAT and why is the UCAT used. And the UCAT is basically a uni entrance exam test which helps to separate applicants to show who's most suited for this role and who isn't. It's used in uni courses such as dentistry and medicine and it assesses critical thinking and thinking under pressure throughout the whole of the test. It is a two hour exam which you have little breaks and there are five different sections which you'll be tested on which include verbal reasoning, decision making, abstract reasoning, quantitative reasoning and situational judgment. You have a different number of questions and time limits per question and per section, so you have to learn the format and the timings of all the questions in preparation for your exam. The scores for each section range from 300 to 900, depending on how many questions you get right, and they are all multiple choice questions, so if you don't know questions, you can just guess them and come back to them later if you have time. And the way that universities use this test is by ranking every student and it's according to what percentile you're put into. For example, you may be put into the top 10%, 20%, or even 50% of all the applicants taking the test, and the unis will have certain cutoff points depending on what university you're applying to. So make sure you do your research and apply strategically. Before we go into anything, I'd give a few general tips at the beginning, and the first one would be to skip the hard questions. Whenever you don't know a question in the UCAT, just guess, flag, and then skip it using the keyboard shortcuts that you'll learn about, as all the questions are worth the same number of marks, and don't leave any blank, as you have a 25% chance of getting the right answer if there are four answers available. My second general tip would be to familiarize yourself with the user interface, as a UCAT uses a software where you're not allowed to use a physical calculator, so learn all the keyboard shortcuts, learn how to move between questions and how to get the calculator up and out of the way when you're answering these questions. My third piece of advice would be to focus on your weak areas and do not just do questions and practice on your strong areas as the UCAT can be a really tough exam to revise for as I've experienced. So it's really important that you focus on your weak areas so you can boost your average up at the end. My fourth piece of advice would be to enjoy revising for the UCAT as during the summer it can seem like such a chore to do a certain amount of UCAT revision every day especially if you don't like the sections in it but if you just give it a bit of time some sections can actually be quite fun like for me it was abstract reasoning and situational judgment and decision making which I found really interesting so this sort of motivated me to do well and if you use the right resources this can make revision a lot easier and a lot more fun. The first section I'll be talking about is verbal reasoning and I'll be going through all of these sections in order that you'll be tested in the exam. You have a 21 minute test time to answer 44 questions so on average you'll have roughly 30 seconds to answer every single question which is not a lot of time. And the verbal reasoning is probably the most common section that applicants find the hardest including myself as this is more of an English test and is very difficult and time consuming. But the basic format of verbal reasoning is you're giving a source and you're given comprehension questions to answer with multiple choice answers and one of the main rules for verbal reasoning that anyone would follow is to only use the information given in the source and these could be historical passages these could be about science maths it could literally be about anything and all you need to do is use the information inside the source and find it as quickly as you can and there are two main methods that most people use to answer verbal reasoning questions and the first one is to read the whole source first and then to read the questions separately 
and choose their answer accordingly. But this method has a lot of pros and cons which I'll be going over in a minute. The second method would be to read the question first and then find that information in the passage. So you're not having to read the whole section of text. If you do use the method where you read the whole section first, you're able to answer some questions really quickly as you're able to instantly recall this after you read the question. And when it comes time to answering and when you're reading the question, you can actually find or you can actually remember where this information was in the passage. So you don't have to scan through the whole thing and you can actually look in a certain section, for example, the beginning, middle or end, and you already have a basic idea of where the answer may be. But obviously this method has some cons as well, which includes using a lot of time to read the passage. And I tried using this method, and even though I read the whole thing, a lot of the times I still didn't remember or understand a lot of the words used and a lot of the context that was occurring in the question. So this method didn't really work for people like myself, so I stuck to the second method which I discussed, which was reading the question question first. Another tip would be to pay attention to a lot of the words and tricky language that they used, such as some most common, I'll probably put a few on the screen right now, to look out for, as they may try to trip you up and to get you to click the wrong answer. And this just comes with practice, and every section I'll be talking about, you'll be able to improve with a lot of practice, and you'll have a better understanding of what I'm saying. Ultimately, it's up to you which method you choose to decide, or if you decide to use your own method, but I would recommend giving each method some time for you to get used to them. For example, example, do a few questions using the first method and then do a few questions using the second method and compare your scores. But at the beginning, I'd recommend not timing yourself and not worrying about the clock at all. Just focus on getting the right answer and understanding why you chose that answer and if you got it right. To help me revise for all the parts of the UCAT, I used Medify and I used this big um, 1,250 question book. And they both had their advantages and disadvantages. But for verbal reasoning, this book was actually quite similar to the real exam I had, and Medify's verbal reasoning section was quite a bit easier than the real thing. And I'll be discussing how similar the book and Medify was in each of these subsections, so you have a basic idea of what to expect in the real exam. Now we will be going on to one of my favourite sections which was decision making and this, I'm reading it out, assesses your ability to make sound decisions and judgments using complex information and you have one minute, no, you have 31 minutes to answer um, every single question with 29 questions so you have roughly a minute per question and these are filled with lots of maths puzzles, logic puzzles and diagrams which you either really like or really don't like and the good thing about this section is that some of these questions can be solved in a few seconds where it's very clear what the right answer is but some of them may take up to like two minutes, three minutes, five minutes which are way too long for the exam and if you happen to see a question like this then you have to guess Guess the answer, flag it, and then skip it. And if you have time, go back to the end and try to work out the correct answer. Tips for this section include drawing diagrams, which include Venn diagrams, drawing tables, and drawing simple diagrams, which helps illustrate what the question is asking. And this really helps in decision making, as you're able to lay all the information out really quickly in a simple table or Venn diagram. So you can clearly work out what section is missing and what needs to be worked out. So this section tests your ability to think outside the box and to come up with the best way to approach this question. Diagrams also helps to display relationships between subjects and what they like and don't like. And you get a lot better at this the more you do as with anything in the UCAT. Things to watch out for when you're doing the questions are the frequency of mentioned things, numbers if they give you any, and the relevancy of anything. Because sometimes they literally use physical numbers, like they'll write a four in the question, but sometimes they'll spell it out like F-O-U-R. And another way to catch you out is they use keywords. For example, if the question is asking you what did Ben enjoy, they might put lots of Ben's in the question and they might say like Ben did not enjoy and Ben did enjoy. So it's really important that you're paying attention and your focus is 100% when answering these questions as they have so many ways to trick you. Practicing a variety of different questions can really expose yourself to the way examiners may ask you different types of problems. And in general, both Medify and this big book may be similar or slightly harder than the real thing. So it doesn't really matter what you get as they are very similar to the questions asked in the exam.
Now, quantitative reasoning is next, which is pretty much the math section of the exam, and it uses basic GCSE math, so don't worry if you're not good at it. In the exam, you have 24 minutes to answer 36 questions, so you have about 40 seconds per question to get the right answer. And all the questions in this math section aren't really hard, they just take quite a long time to work out. And if you visually see that a problem may take five steps or four steps, then I'd immediately skip this and come back to it at the end, as this section is all about time pressure. You need to be up to date with your basic GCSE maths skills like percentage changes, unit conversions and you need to be comfortable with using times and time zones which is something I really struggled on because they give you so much information. The people that do do well here are not necessarily maths geniuses but they use their time very well and they are very time efficient. A really important tip that I would give is to use the number pad on your keyboard and if you don't have a keyboard, then I'd really recommend buying a keyboard or using a laptop keyboard if you have one. The number pad, the nine digit numbers are really important along with the addition, asterisk and subtraction sign because you won't get a physical calculator in the exam, you'll just get your keyboard. And you'll get an online calculator which is really slow if you're literally using the mouse to drag and to click all the numbers. So it's really useful to learn all these shortcuts and things with the UCAT calculator using your keyboard. And there are so many tutorials on YouTube where they show you how to use it as efficiently as possible, which can literally save you so many marks. And I might make a video like this in the future. This section isn't really difficult to teach as the questions are pretty basic, but it's just the timings that's important. And I'd say if you use Medify to revise, the questions are actually very similar to the real thing. But if you use this book to revise, the questions are a lot harder in this book than the real thing. So it depends what you really wanna go for. If you want to be ready for every question in the exam then either would be fine but if you want to really challenge yourself so the exam might feel easier then I'd recommend getting this book but really they are both extremely similar so whatever your choice is you'll be good. Abstract reasoning is next and it is probably my most favourite section even though it was extremely hard. This section is all about patterns and finding relationships between shapes. This may sound a bit silly but you have 13 minutes to answer 55 questions. So you have roughly 14 seconds to answer each question. It may seem impossible without looking at the questions but when you do practice you start to realise that a lot of these patterns can be identified relatively quickly and it all comes down to speed and how quickly you can recognise all these patterns. Basically in these big categories sections there are lots of little questions that they ask you and lots of different shapes and patterns that they give you so you have to basically identify which set this goes into or whether it belongs in one set or neither so you may be able to answer five of these questions in like five seconds so the time is not really representative of how hard and the format of the question my recommendations for this would be to look at the pattern first and not look at the question first for example if you're giving two sets a and b you want to work out all the rules between them first and then you should look at the question and see which set this belongs into. A lot of people use the mnemonic scans which comes from looking at the shape, the colour, the arrangement, the number and the size of all the shapes in the boxes. So if you're ever stuck follow this mnemonic and you'll be able to soon identify the pattern hopefully and if you can't just skip the question because in this section you really no time to waste. You will improve in pattern recognition and abstract reasoning as a whole the more questions you do and they can be done really quickly so you can practice a lot of them in a short amount of time but when you're first doing it like I'd recommend doing any section don't focus on the time focus on identifying all the patterns correctly and then answering all the questions correctly and then finally focus on getting the timings right. Comparing it to Medify, I'd say Medify is very similar to the real thing and I'd say that the book is slightly more difficult than the real exam. The final section in the UCAT is situational judgment. You have 26 minutes to answer 69 questions in the exam and although this may seem time tight as you have about 20 seconds for each question, you can answer a lot of these questions quite quickly and in quick succession. If you do a lot of practice of these questions and understand the general GMC and GDC guidelines and their practice ethics. When I did these past papers on Medify, I'd find myself finishing with literally like 15 minutes to spare and this was not a time pressure in section for me at all and I imagine it wouldn't be time pressuring for a lot of people as well. As long as you do enough practice you'll be able to do fine in this section. Probably the main reason I really liked answering these questions is probably because all the questions were really logical and ethical and all the questions are quite similar to each other so I felt like I'd answered so many of them before. Hopefully when editing I'll list a few of the general rules around me somewhere here 
and you'll be able to follow them and use them and apply them to every question you do. And if you got a question wrong, it's really important that you understand your thought process on getting the wrong answer and understanding the thought process on how to get the right answer for next time. Write down all the mistakes you made, as simple as they may be, and you may be able to read over them for the next exam you do. Medified is a really good way of explaining what the correct answer is and why, so I'd really recommend using their resource. And for comparison purposes, in difficulty, the book was pretty much the same as the exam, and Medify was probably slightly easier than the real exam. So there we go, there was my breakdown of the UCAT test and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe and support my channel and hopefully I'll see you again. But if not, I'm wishing you all the best in the future and wishing you the best of luck in your upcoming UCAT exam as this year has been especially tough so I really feel for everyone doing any sort of exams this year.